What's going on? Today I'm going to show you a brief overview of how to do your own oil change. Now some tools that you're going to need for this. An oil drain pan or a pan to catch oil or a bucket or something. A funnel. Your new oil filter. Your new oil. A drop light or a headlamp of some sorts. Some gloves. Some clean wipes or paper towels or something. A ratchet or wrench, the socket that fits your vehicles, something to lay on when you're under the vehicle, and ramps or jack and jack stands so that way you can get under the vehicle. Pretty basic. First things first, uh, if you're going to use jack stands, jack it up, get it off the ground a little bit so you can get under it. Uh, we have these ramps. If you're going to use these ramps though, pro tip, grab a jack stand, do that just for safety, that way it doesn't fall. Now you want to pop the hood. Most are located right here, or right here on most vehicles, 99% of the time. Then the latch can be a little hard. This one, I don't know if you can see it, it's right in the middle though. You just push up on it. And you have it, and you get your prop and put it in the hole. Now this is on a 2016 Hyundai Tucson, but this is just going to be kind of an overview video. So locate your oil cap. Usually it's on the top of the valve cover. Now you're going to want to loosen this. If I can do it. Put it on there. So, loosen this. And I like to pull the dipstick out a little bit to make it drain faster and easier. Next, get you something to lay on. Uh, I have a drop light. Here you can do a headlamp or something else. And your oil drain pan or something to catch the oil with. Alright, so this is the underside of the car. Some have a little fabric or metal shield that you kind of have to take off. So now you want to identify where your oil drain is and your oil filter. Usually they're pretty noticeable, either right on the front of the engine or right under the engine. Uh, just do some looking around and make sure that this isn't your transmission drain. Uh, how you can tell is if there's maybe accessories is one way to tell. Uh, if you can see like a drive belt right next to it, that means that it's the engine and not the back of the engine where the transmission would be. Now you want to make sure your socket or ratchet fits nice and snugly on that bolt, on the drain bolt. Uh, if you round that off, it's very, very not fun to get off. Uh, mechanics will charge you quite a bit because they'll have to weld a nut on or have to get it with a pair of vice grips or something. So. Make sure your socket fits nice and snug, that way you don't round it off. Make sure you align your pan where you where the oil is going to come out. Let it drain. Now usually you can loosen your oil filter up to let it drain by hand. This one you cannot, so we'll go get a tool for it. Now, this is a tool designed to get oil filters off. It grips around it and twists them off, or it can tighten. Never use it to tighten it, though. Uh, you don't necessarily need one of these to get an oil filter off. Uh, people have used screwdrivers before and just hammered them into the side of it and then twisted it. Uh, but these, if you get one from AutoZone or something, are just a couple bucks. This one's a snap-on one, so it does a little bit more uh, sizes. But yeah, very handy to have. Now that you have your old oil filter out, you're going to want to let it drain until it starts just one drop at a time. That's when you know that it's basically empty. Here's one good tip before putting your oil drain plug back in. Make sure you wipe it off. Some of these are magnetic. Get any, uh, if there's any metal on it or anything, hopefully not. Wipe it off and then put it back in. Now some of these bolts, you're going to see there's a washer on it. That's a crush washer to make sure it seals. Uh, sometimes when you get a new oil filter, it comes with one. Uh, some uh, have a rubber seal that can be reused. So put a new one on this one and tighten it down. It doesn't need to be super snug uh, or super tight, I mean, uh, but it does need to be tight. There are torque specs online that you can probably find for your specific vehicle. Uh, and tighten it down. 
Now one thing you want to make sure of when you take the old oil filter off is that this gasket that seals it comes with it. If not, you want to make sure you look at where the filter housing is where you took it off and get it off there because then your new one won't seal if there's already an old one on there. Now make sure when you have your old filter off to check the size. I already did. This one lines up. The size is correct. The number is correct as well for the vehicle. Uh, but just double check the size because sometimes they do change them uh, in the middle of a model year and stuff. I've seen that before so just double check and make sure. Now with your new one take a little bit from the new oil or some in the cap here and you want to make sure you get some oil on this seal. So keep doing it. And, uh, you know, stick a finger in the bottle. What this is going to do is make sure that it seals to the filter housing and gets a good seal, that way it doesn't leak. Now some people like to fill the filter with oil before putting it on. I personally don't, uh, just in case there is anything in your oil. Uh, it doesn't just go straight into the center of the filter and then back into the engine. So I like to let the engine filter itself. So make sure all the gasket has good oil in it then put it back in. Now I know it's hard to see, but when threading the new, you see the filter housing, when threading the new filter on, you want to make sure you don't cross thread. So make sure you're, you kind of wiggle it to line it up. Just go nice and easy, and it should spin on there really easily. See how I did that? You can just spin it right on. Now, it'll spin on until it's snug, and then with your hand, you don't have to go super, super tight, but just go snug. Right there, you know, no, there's not a lot of friction. They do have torque specs if you do want to look and do that. Uh, but that's snug and you're all good. Wipe up any oil that's anywhere, that way you don't get a burning smell of oil. Uh, put your pan back on and then you can go to filling it. So let's go to that. Now that you're ready to fill your car back up with oil, you're gonna probably want to funnel. This one's more for transmission, so you can get a shorter one, uh, but whatever will do. Or if you want to try to pour it in without a funnel, I don't recommend it because you'll spill oil on the engine and it'll create a burning smell. So definitely just get a funnel. Uh, and when you're going to fill it up, check the cap, make sure you get the right oil. So you can see here, 530. Make sure you check the owner's manual to see if that's synthetic or conventional. So you're going to want to look online and see how much uh, oil your engine takes. This one says it takes about 4.7 quarts. Uh, always make sure you buy about one extra quart more than it says. So in this case I bought a 5 quart and one more quart just to be safe because uh, it all depends on how much oil the oil filter takes in and it just seems like they always go under just a little bit. So wait for your oil to all drain in. Now pull your dipstick out. You're gonna wanna wipe it first. You can see it's your dipstick because the handle will be yellow and or orange and it'll say engine oil right on it. I'll focus. So now stick your dipstick back in. And you can see on this one, there's two dots. Those dots indicate the full, it has a little F, I don't know if it'll be able to see that, and a low. So we are just barely over the full mark, which is good. What you want to do now is start the vehicle to let the engine get oil into the oil filter and all around it, and then double check it again. Now if you run the car for a little bit, you want to take your dipstick out again, wipe it first, check it, and we are right at the full mark. You always want to make sure you check it on a level surface too, that way you get an accurate reading of how full your engine oil actually is. Another thing you want to do sometimes if you're doing an oil change is top off your washer fluid, uh, check your reservoirs, your brake, coolant, just make sure everything's good. Uh, everything has levels on it where it should be. Washer fluid uh, usually doesn't have a level, but you can tell if you need some. 
wash fluids usually always blue. Everything's very labeled under here. Uh, it's not too hard. And you might just want to check, make sure there's no leaks or anything after running it. This one's all good. And that's the basics of it. And it's as simple as that. I hope that this answered some of your questions, or maybe if you have any more, leave them in the comments. Uh, I'll make sure to answer them if I get the notification or anything. Uh, if you could, click that like button. Uh, if this found this helpful or anything, it really helps out the videos. And thank you so much. On to the next one.